top of the morning to you laddies! My name is Jacksept Guy and welcome back to Norman Reedus and his amazing fetus. These feats right here. This should be the last episode of Death Stranding. It's going to come to a close. Which is kind of sad, but I'm very curious to see what's going on in the game. I- there's still a lot of stuff where I'm like, ah, uh, what? My brain. I thought he wasn't going to plug it in for a second. I'm still getting memories? Hi, Mass. You know what day it is today, baby? Birthday. Today would be a very special day, little mummy has. You're not born yet. But the more candles, the merrier, right? Soon it'll be time for you to come out into the real world. I promise. And then we can have a real party. No. Oh. That's cute. But now we know he's dead. And technically so is this baby, because it never got born. Are you dead if you never got born? Or are you unborn? Sam. Zombie. The terminal for available orders. The zombie baby. People are using my generators. People are doing everything with my stuff. Do I, do I not get a million billion likes? Whatever. It's not all about likes, anyway. It's whatever. It's poopy stinky. Orders for Sam. Yes. Deliver crypto biotes to Fragile. Do not submerge. Got it. Uh, dinner bone. <laughs> Shaho cams reverse strike. Who is the cooler picture? Oh, I'm gonna have to go with this. You had the cooler name and the cooler picture. Sorry, everybody else. I'm going with Dinner Bones bike. It's going to be upside down. Don't forget, that container isn't airtight. You can't afford to submerge it, even partially. Can I just bring a bunch of the crypto bios that I had? I have a ton of them. Okay, and this, this, this. You guys can all. No, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to recycle. Now I'm not heading out yet. Hold on. Give me a second. Oh. Yeah, that's cool. Let me get rid of some stuff and let me get some other stuff. I have a- uh, I carry cycle! Network connection unstable. Fuck! What am I supposed to do? Place an utility pouch? No. Place the private locker. Dumb! These are all the ones I got from Cliff's thing, anyway. Jesus Christ, so many blooder bags! What am I, a fucking hospital? Um, and what I have in my private locker are more blood bags. Anyway, let's take these and put them in my utility pouch. Uh, okay. Put that one back in the private locker. Okay. That's a problem, though, because I was going to really gear up on this one and fabricate a bunch of stuff. I wanted to fabricate, like, the quadruple rocket launcher and everything again. I don't know if I really have to fight much stuff anymore. Is the world ending? It feels like the world's probably ending. We've been getting near constant time for region for a while. As a result, everything you've built for us out here has been completely destroyed. The good news is, we managed to recover all cargo stored on site and transferred it to the capital Not City Distro Center. As for the not so good news, chiral printers are currently unusable yeah. due to the network instability. Given the circumstances... Okay, hold, hold on, dead, dead guy. Um... Oh, I'm going back to the other one! Oh, fascinating! I haven't been here in ages! 
Jeez, this place seems so tiny now. This is where I dropped off my dead mom. <laughs> Weird. You might want to consider turning to your fellow porters for assistance. And I'll leave that up to you, Sam. I'm sure you'll come through for us. You always do. Yeah, you fucking right I do. Working my ass off. I I actually didn't even realize where I'm going. Okay, yeah, up that way and across. Cool. So I'm not allowed to use any of the structures that I built because they're suddenly just not working. Eh, don't do that to me. I know you still have to keep some sort of journey going. Because if all that my structures were still here, the game would be kind of broken by now, and you're not. You don't have any atmosphere. But I spent a long time building shit. I can't really remember this area now. So there's really only two areas in the game. And within those, there's a bunch of other micro areas. Like the snow and desert and forests and all that kind of thing. But there's two, like, sections of worlds. There you go, two maps. That's what I'm trying to say. I haven't been to this one in a really long time. Okay, calm down. Stop being so extra. Uh, we go down through here. Yeah, and this is where the wind farm is. Man, this place seems really, really tiny now. Ah! Sheepers! Oh, My Audra deck's all banjaxed. Cause some big dumb Troy Baker shot it! Next time I see Troy, I'm gonna give him- Oh my god, no. Oh my god, no! Why are these things here? Go, 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 go! Oh, they really remind me of something from Bloodborne! I think Kojima was very heavily inspired by Bloodborne and Dark Souls for this game. The... The delivering and all that kind of stuff kind of reminds me of the bonfires. Oh god. Just keep going fastly. Oh god, Jesus. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah! Why is my bike flying? Type that into Google and see what happens. Jesus fucking Christ. This whole thing is gonna break. Ah, oh, shit. I should have thought about this. Ah! I don't think I'm supposed to be on a bike for this area. <laughs> yes, there's a generator right there. You're fine. You're fine, Sam. Stop freaking out. There's a there's a bunch of cars right there. Anyway, oh my god! You said not to submerge it. I don't really have a ch choice if you cover the shite and ink. Wait for it, wait for it, this thing is full of blood! Where is he? That's not you! Oh, there he is! Screw this! Get something better than that! You know what, I'm just gonna run. I don't think fighting this thing is gonna be in my best interest right now! Ugh. And I could probably just... Oh god, go, go, go! What's wrong? What's happening? Hey! <laughs> oh my god, speed skeleton is the fucking way forward, lads. Yes! New stress level is increasing. It's gonna have to wait a second. Oh, I broke my legs. Hold on. <laughs> My stress level's increasing right now! God! Go, for the love of God, Sam! Stop getting caught in your own jump animations and just run! Hup! Hup! And a hup! Okay, we're fine. Where'd he even go? Oh, he's all the way back up there! He wasn't even chasing me! Why was I speeding up? <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. Scary sounds. Are you alright there, Lulu? Yeah! You're a trooper! What a little fighter! Don't show your- Don't show your goodie bits to the people at home! There we go. 
There we go. Okay, cool. We're doing well. Did any vehicles survive out here? Damn it. <laughs> I was just saying as well, I'm about to get to the generator and then it took it away from me. I can't go through the water. Which should be fine because this thing should just clear this. Yeah. Speed's got four likes from Lou. I love you, Lulu. Thank you. I gave you some likes on the way. All right. There's a zip line there. I should have come back and just... If I'd known this was going to happen, I would have planted zip lines everywhere. Okay. I guarantee you it's going to take this vehicle away from me again. I bet you anything I'll just drive and then suddenly I'll run into another giant creature. Okay, I don't need you for the truck, I need you for my legs. Thank you. Like, 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 comment, subscribe to that tower. At least if somebody uses your stuff, it, it automatically gives a like. Oh, this is a defensive truck. It's, it's gonna happen again. The exact same thing is gonna happen again. Am I allowed to move? Oh, just regular BTs. Wait, no, that happened last time too. Hold on. The game just really does not want you to go fast at all in any aspects ever. It's just like, oh, you finally figured it out and you're at the end of the game and you have to come all the way back using all the structures you've had before? Nope. Idiot. Ah! <laughs> Me on my car. They're not even on you, Sam. What are you doing? Jump. Speed skeleton OP. Woo! Yikes. Okay, you can keep that handgun. The handguns suck. Wait, what? No! I was literally shaking as hard as I could. Oh! Okay, well, let's try it again then, shall we? Where are you going to load me back, though? And why do you have to load so much? You should have just this area loaded. Attacks from front can't be blocked. Enemies will often guard against frontal attacks. Try and avoid... Okay. I have only been doing frontal attacks, because that's where my fists go. Maybe I should just go on foot. Oh! Right from the very beginning? Round two. We have no vehicle this time, which kind of blows, but I did get some extra things. I have like hematic grenades now. My container also got ruined with the crypto bites, crypto biotes in it and I had to use a container repair spray that I had in the private locker in that area. So that was good, but things might go really bad. I'm going to be stuck out in this stuff for a really long time now if I don't get a vehicle. I don't have a bowler gun. I do have a lot of blood in me. So we should use that to our advantage. Okay, you're not blinky blinky yet. There you go. Where are they? It said cut umbilical cord before I even got there. Ah, interesting. Okay, so I can do that. Douche! Did that kill you? Sure did. Shit. Shit. Go, speed skeleton, go! Run like the wind! Run like you've never run before! 
Okay, 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 out of boy, out of boy, out of boy. Just keep going. I hope there's a generator down here somewhere. There is a zip line, but I don't know where is it. that zip line can connect to from where I am. Shit, they're still around, really? Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, I've never seen that one before. He clapped his little hands. Okay, cool. I don't have to still deal with the mules up here, do I? There are far more pressing issues. Mm, stop, mm, stop, stop. Can I make it over this? I don't have ladders or anything. Okay, it just said do not submerge. Does that count for the shallow water? Ha! Okay, we're fine. Cool! I want to use this zip line because there's another one down there. We can really shave off some... Shave off some time! Because I do not want to have to do this a third time. Well, I did save it at the station back there, so... I won't have to do all of this again. Ha <laughs> ha! Ping! Negated. Oh, thank God. That's so much nicer. Hi, fellas. Everybody wave on the way across. Is he shooting me? Why would you do this? Why? 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 It's right there. If you just move this one a tiny bit, it would line up perfectly. Damn it. Would have saved me so many headaches. And now my life is inconvenient. That and that's really important to me right now. Fuck. Generator! Don't mind if I do. Look at this. Gamers helping gamers. Ooh, it's a level three as well. Captain Dongs, I'm back. I'm gonna get you to six thousand and no more. There you go. Why are you playing creepy siren sounds? Stop. Okay, don't fall over. You're almost there, Sam. I can see it. The first city that we went to in this game. Ow. How shallow is this? Not very. Fuck. Okay, Sam, whatever you do, do not fall in the water. Container damage, crypto biotes. I know, I'm trying my best to get there on time, but it's very hard. You took my car away from me. And legs suck. Wait. No, I was hitting the button to like. Why would one leg when one can care? I know. Okay. I know I'm a leg end, but. Fuck. Is this possible? Man, I really miss this area. It's so photo real looking. Uh, can I take anything out of you? Uh, a ladder? No, damn it. I don't have any ladders. Wait, maybe in my private locker? Nope. Apparently I've never used this before. Okay. Oh, that even has red in it! That's double bad! I don't have any PCCs. I can't do anything. I think I can go across anyway. I don't know. I don't want to fuck this up.
Let me see, is it easier further down? I don't think so. Let's try it, let's see what happens. It's not submerged! It's not submerged, it's fine! Is it only count if I fall over then? Don't fall over. I think it just said cargo damaged or ruined. Well, it's not giving me a game over screen, so we'll roll with it. Yeah, drink up. Now jump up. Man, right till the end, the game is like, here's a really difficult thing for you to do. Have fun! Sure is pretty, though. And this speed skeleton is really making me feel like a badass. I have 5,300 Kyrelium crystals. Uh oh. Big one? Big one. Oh, real big one. Oh, that sucks. What is this music? Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa! Two of them? What? What the fuck? Oh, that sucks! Why are there so many? I have hematic grenades. Uh, yeah. Fuck you! Oh my god! And oh god, he's he's uh, he's submerging. And fuck you! Yeah, crack that anus on your faces. Okay. Oh my god! Thank you. I got likes from my own Audra deck. Wait, are they there all the time? Can I, like, go back in there for a second? Or are they just gonna show up again? There we go. Okay. Oh, thank god! Look at all these beautiful cars and bikes! This is a great day to be a gamer! Oh, because people drove into this area and then lost the, the vehicles. Oh my god, all the signs. Just go, Sam. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Please just let me go all the way. I have a feeling it won't. What is happening? What is that sound? Everything is shaking! I thought that was one of the whales for a second. Oh, something is badly wrong! <laughs> That's my exact reaction to some world-ending cataclysm. Hmm, what's this? What's that? The it's raining frogs? I always knew it would someday. Oh, fuck. No, just let me in. I'm so close, let me in, let me go! It is the whales! That's so cool! 
defeat the BT? No, there's there's no way I have to do this. My crypto biotes are over there. I'm I'm running into town. Fuck this. How am I gonna defeat a giant whale? I didn't even have enough bullets and ammo and stuff to defeat the small ones back there. That is so badass though. Get your stuff. Oh, I can't! There's an invisible wall! Oh my god, I have to fight you. Okay. Wow, so much damage. Uh-oh. Uh, what? Weird. Okay, I guess we're doing this. Oh god! Oh god! Ah! This is some Shadow of the Colossus shit! Ah! Fucking hell! Can I get my rocket launcher back? Can somebody help me? <laughs> Quadruple rocket launcher, there we go. I'm still convinced that I don't have to defeat all of this, because this is... This is a lot! Hit him! Nah, fucking keep hitting him. I'ma just stay here. Seems good. Okay, well, that ruins my plan. And now my boots are getting ruined! This is a lot to take in! Okay, I need some high ground. Okay, holy fuck. <laughs> Hit him in the fucking gob. My blood rockets! I keep thinking I hear a second one. Guys, this is nuts! I'm fighting a giant whale! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Hit him. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my god! It's <laughs> so awesome! This is gonna take me forever! Okay, splash. Sploosh. Oh, I thought you were gonna keep coming up. That sounded like a Metal Gear Ray. That was cool. Okay, what do I use next? <laughs> Somebody's giving me a blood bag though. Thank you. I really didn't think I'd have to do this entire fight. I can't run too far either because A, I'm slow, and B, my legs are gonna run out and there's no generators around now. Where is he? Oh! Oh, that probably does do more damage. I think that's a lot of reused metal- WHOA! He shot fucking people at me! What a 
dick! Don't you have enough already? Instead of shooting people at me. Eat a crypto biot. Fuck him up, Kenneth! Fuck him up! My other ammo won't actually damage him, will it? Oh! Jesus! Okay, just fucking drop it. Lou, I know! Okay, power skeleton's cool, but I don't really need one right now. God, go! I don't know where anything is or what's happening. Get up onto this. We'll be better off. Can you? Oh, for fuck's sake. Climb Sam, please. Thank you. Okay, grenade launcher. Oh, he's fucking Godzilla-ing me! This is epic! Ow! Shit. Shit. I wasn't paying attention. Oh my god, no, 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 no. Can- Oh, I have no blood bags. Fuck. Okay, let's do this. Jesus. Uh, offload. Yes. Oh, I can't fire any more grenades because I have no fucking blood. Oh, God. This, there we go. Thank you. Oh, you're not coming for me. Thank fuck. So, can I, like, uh, equip this? Uh, maybe if I actually did the thing? <laughs> this is fucking hectic. I need more! <laughs> oh, blood bag. Yes! My freaking skeleton legs are running out, though. Thankfully, there is a power skeleton over there. Remote detonation grenade launcher. Don't throw them at me, just drop them! Oh god. Oh god. Oh fuck yeah! They did crazy damage! Okay. Okay, my legs are out. Do that thing again! Uh, Jesus Christ, having to manage all this stuff in the middle of a fight is very hard. And then not being able to get any of the stuff in the middle of the fight, like a generator and stuff, is also very hard. Alright, we need to go get this uh, power skeleton. Yeah, just- just let me pick them up! Stop throwing them at me! Okay, equip this power skeleton. I don't even know what's going on behind me. I am just so obsessed with trying to- Yes, why did you unequip? I don't know why. I don't want the shotgun. Oh, he's above me. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's above me. Okay, thank God I didn't get hit by the people again. Alright. Do the open mouthy thing again.
What's making that fucking weird sound? Where? What's happening? Oh, there. Damn it. Oh, you're in the red, bitch! Okay, I think he's shooting people at me again. Okay, we can do this, gamers. Little by little. Oh god, that's what's making the fucking noise. Ground bitches. Just, oh god, just do whatever damage you can, man. Okay, holy fuck! Sam, climb! Please climb! Please climb! Sam! Sam! For the love of all that's holy! Climb! Jesus fucking Christ! Wait, am I out of battery in this as well, already? Or did I just pick up the wrong fucking thing? No, I'm out of battery. Wait, am I? Yes. I'm out of battery. Oh, I hope I get to do this first try. Uh, this is the normal grenade launcher. I do not want to have to repeat this. Yeah, that was a good one. He's so close, Sam! Stay up here, those fuckers can't get you. God, Jesus, he's everywhere! Oh, so close! One more is gonna do it, Sam! Come on, Norman. Come on, Norman! Uh-oh. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What is happening? Holy shit! Hell yeah! Put that on my mantle! That's my trophy. Wait, so what the hell is that thing? Why are some of them just gigantic? I thought BTs were things that had to exist in this world that have died. That's very realistic looking. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> yes, you did it, Sam. Yeah. Oh, I could kiss you, you sweet son of a bitch. Please do not fucking I kiss me. It was all over. It was all over until I came through and kicked some fucking A. Okay. This is nice. Okay, he just has to catch his breath. Uh, drop that. Is there a generator nearby? Oh, mama llama! That was fucking wild! Uh, drop this shit. I don't need three handguns. They suck. Quadruple rocket launcher, though. Ah, hell yeah. Uh, let's sort my cargo. And offload you. Alright, let's just go to where we need to be. That was a miserable experience for Sam. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the game just really does not give you a chance, does it? It's just like, well, too bad. If you're not prepared for this, then fuck you. God, I'm gonna have like 8,000 after this. Yes. Yes. Give it to me. 
Just killed a giant whale. He really likes his giant whales. In Metal Gear Solid 5, there was a giant fire whale. There you go. Oh, there's a generator. I was blocked by my car. Ah, uh, Loror, now is not the time. I have a place to be and a thing to deliver. It is here, isn't it? Yes. Can't believe we're coming up towards the end. In all fairness, that was super cool to look at. It was a little... Uh, it was a little clunky. Because I don't think... I think the game's mechanics are designed for traversing and carrying. When that collides with... Like, combat. Fighting the mules is one thing, but having to fight something like that... It's very intense, because there's a lot of, like, plodding through the ink. But... As a set piece, that was fucking dope. Keep going, Sam. There's no need to slow, slow down now. Ah, we're back to the Nintendo Wii! Oh, some stuff's not loading in. There you go. <laughs> Oh. I didn't know I had to walk all the way down here. I would have brought the car otherwise. I'm coming, Fragile! I hope these crypto biotes are worth it. <laughs> I went through fucking hell. Literally. Thank heavens you made it. Fragile's been in a coma for a while now. But with all these crypto biotes you brought, we should be able to bring her round. And with any luck. It'll only take a few more to get her back on her feet. Is it bad that I submerged it all in ink? Tar? You did well, Sam. Thank you. It means a lot. I... I suffered a great deal to get here. It was a pain in my fucking ass! But we're here. We did it. Oh, God. This is awesome! Can't believe I actually got that. Jeez. All right, lay it on me, some plot. I want to relax for a second. Sam. You're back. <laughs> it must have been one hell of a journey, especially on your own. But now the whole team is together again. The whole team? Die hard men too. Too much traveling to and from beaches in such a short span. Chiral matter contaminated her cells, effectively causing jet lag on a molecular level. <laughs> because of that, her homeostatic mechanisms were shaken. Don't worry, she's not in any danger, but she needs some rest. So where's the director? He's being looked after in another room. Bridges personnel found him lying outside the isolation ward. Similar to when you came back from Cliff's Beach. <sighs> Even after decontamination, she needed more and more time to recover. Thumb up? <laughs> Sam, you made it. Hungry. Thanks. Looks like you need me after all. Who'd have thought? Anyway, clock's ticking. Am I right? Sam's here. The great deliver. The only one who can reach Amelie's beach. Uh, oh. You're in no condition to do this. It's not fair to you or Sam. Uh, um, in my own search for Amelie's beach, I have come to realize something extraordinary. 
If beaches were likened to a multiverse, hers would appear to exist on a higher plane than ours. I can walk the beaches of others, but hers is beyond my reach. It's invisible, <laughs> inaccessible, even to fragile, I fear. Uh, imagine it as a circulatory system, if you will. Each of our beaches is a single capillary, but Armelie's beach is the heart that pumps blood to the rest of us. Capillaries are subordinate to the greater whole, a whole governed by the heart, which gives direction, which dictates flow, which dictates everything, controls everything. Don't you see? She is in control. You should use one of the dolls. Didn't you say that they were... You may be able to travel against the flow and reach her, but having done so, if she does not wish to let you go, if she wishes to keep you, she can. Fragile and Die Hardman broke free from her beat, didn't they? I don't think it was any different from what happened to you. I didn't get out because I wanted to. I was forced out, repatriated, if you will, by her. Forced out? Why? <clears throat> this is only a theory, but... She wants you. Wants you to go to her. That's her final wish, don't you think? So that's it, huh? Amelie's the EE, and this is her endgame. Just so we're clear, if I want to stop the last stranding and come back in one piece, I need to go to her beach and talk her out of it. Is that about right? Correct. As cliche as it sounds, you're our only hope. Though, quite frankly, I doubt even you can change her mind. If you can't make her see reason, you'll have to kill her. And if you kill her... You'll save the world, but you'll be stranded outside of it. Forever. Well, make it official then. You ready to deliver the package? <laughs> she does not look ready. Okay. I guess we're not coming back. Oh, BB. I'll talk to her. Maybe she'll listen. But with the shape the world's in, it'll only be delaying the inevitable. Still. If it buys us time to try and build something better, a new lease on life, at least for a little bit. Well, I can think of one woman who made the most of a chance like that. Nothing lasts forever, not even the world. But we gotta keep it going as long as we can, right? Patch the holes, change the parts, all that. So we can say we had a good run, that we lived thought you didn't like having to handle things with care. Because <laughs> it was hard enough keeping my own shit together. Back when we met at the cave, the only thing I cared about was making it to the next sunrise. Sure as hell didn't care about America or the future. I was living a lie, hung up on past regrets. I was broken. But somewhere along the way, I started changing. I started meeting people that made me think that maybe it wasn't all bad. People that put their faith in tomorrow, and in me. That kept the lights on, and waited for hope to arrive. So I gotta deliver, for their sake. Even if it means you never come back? 
fucked if I do, fucked if I don't, right? <laughs> to Port Knot City. Kid's done enough. No more. All right. I'll do my best to nurse our little one back to health. Concentrate. Help me look for Emily. Reach for her, Sam. Feel her. I know you love her. You love her! Not anymore. Seems like she's just a big old bad beach. <laughs> I wonder if I actually have to do anything or if it's all just going to be a cutscene. Killing me? <laughs> Episode thirteen, Sam Strand. No, Audra Deck. Um, that's Earth. Did I, did I finally make it to the moon? Find Emily, okay. That's so cool. I knew I was going to go to the moon. I said it. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is actually the moon. 
They did say her beach was a plane of existence higher than ours. Man, beaches suck. They talk about people hanging out here and... Oh, I can't do anything. People hang out in their beaches and search for things and whatnot, but... There's nothing to do on a beach. Uh, Sam? Why are we sitting down? London Bridge is falling down. Falling down. Falling down. London Bridge is falling down. My fair lady. Ooh, black dress. The last stranding has already begun. Amelie? Bridget. You're too late. What took you so long? Your voice. You still don't know who I am, do you? Who are you? Sam. I knew you'd come back. Jesus! <laughs> Creepy! I love you, Sam. I'll be waiting for you on the beach. been waiting for you right here ever since you were supposed to stop me stop all of this Bridget yes it's me Sam where's Amelie where she's always been nowhere my daughter, Samantha, America Strand, doesn't exist. Amelie doesn't exist? Not in your world. I'm sorry, Sam. I've had to wear a mask for so long. Amelie and Bridget are both a part of me. What's that supposed to mean? Quiet, and I'll tell you. There is no time for questions. Listen. Just listen. Okay, please explain things. <laughs> Do you understand, Sam? Amelie and Bridget? Those are just names. What I am is an extinction entity. So, knowing what you know now, you have two choices. I was getting shot, one of them. You wouldn't come back if it happened here, you know. You'd be straight on to the afterlife. But no, it's not one of them. Killing you would be a terrible mistake. 
They know that better than anyone. The last stranding has already begun. A seam has formed from my beach and the beaches of every soul in America. And soon it will be inundated by a vast surge of antimatter starting here. In a flash, this world will be no more. Consumed by an explosion. A big bang. So, that brings us to your first choice. Do nothing. Stay here with me and bear witness to the very end. Just watch it burn. Together with me until the last flame wings out. Sounds so bad, does it? It's not like the world has long left anyway. Then there's the second choice. In expanding the network, you brought people and their beaches together, integrating them into a greater whole. Like this kibu. But in doing so, you also bound them to my beach. The very beach where I opened the gates to the other side. You can't stop what's coming. But if you cut me and my beach loose, perhaps you can stop it from spreading. You might just prevent the last stranding. And mankind will live to die another day. And it doesn't have to end here. But it does. The beach is doomed no matter what. One look ought to tell you that. <sighs> Which is why we must sever our connection. That'll be it. The end of the Death Stranding. You can't stop the inevitable. The sixth extinction will happen either today or tomorrow. You can either end it with dignity, quick, clean, and in a flash, or you can struggle in vain, knowing full well what's waiting come the finish. Those are your choices. it all this time. Perhaps you still have a chance to stop this nightmare. You brought the world together. You have the right to decide. Pull the rope or cut the noose. But whatever you do, don't hesitate. I'm ready, Sam Strand. Make your choice. Well, wait. I don't know what to do. Sure you do. After everything, how could you not? Do I actually have to decide? Oh, shit. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna shoot her. Uh-oh. Uh oh. I can't reload. Um. Hug? I'm here for you. Always. Wait, no! Like you were for me. Uh oh, I didn't want that ending. Here, it's a dream catcher. 
Wear it when you sleep, and I'll keep the nightmares away. I'll always be with you. When you're all grown up, you'll need it to make us whole again. And when the time comes, you'll have to stop me. You are the only one who can. Promise you'll remember. Sam, I'll be waiting for you on the beach. I remember. You knew. You always knew. I did and I didn't. I had so many dreams of the future. I didn't know which ones to trust. Which is why I decided to share them with you and the others. But to connect the dots, to make sense of everything, you need perspective. You need time. Time has no meaning to me. I am not a line. I am a single point. Which is why all I could do was just show you the choices and let you decide. Our nightmares are your dreams. You found the common thread. The strand that links them together. And you did that the only way possible. To live life one day at a time. has a role to play. It was the bonds between people that brought the world together. And if that is what matters most to you, then I will stay here on this beach. And I will shut myself in and the rest of you out. Shut yourself in, come on. Once the last stranding starts, it can't be stopped. I can't go with you. All I can do is try to spare you the worst. Why do you have to stay on the beach? Sam, I am the beach. And I must stay here and ensure that the extinction happens. Even if it takes tens or hundreds of thousands of years. Alone? That's what an EE does. <sighs> if I had just done my job, none of this would have happened. But I... I couldn't take it anymore. I got so tired of waiting, and I figured that no one would blame me if I just got it all over with. Did. Sounds like hell. <laughs> but you and the others came together, connected, and you may be living on borrowed time, but you still have hope. Before each of the big five, life rebelled. They fought back evolved in order to survive. The extinction isn't just an ending. It's an opportunity. And if I have to pay the price for that, to be the sacrifice, then so be it.
A gun won't help you here. But it still has a role to play. I'm gonna shoot myself? Make a decision bring an end to this and bring this to an end. I was trying to shoot her because I wanted to not let the world die and let it just die at a different time. And then I... Oh. Are the credits playing? What? Can I just go into the water and do something? I want to equip the gun, but I can't. Hey! 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 hey. Okay. Can I go anywhere? This is so weird. Oh, double jump. Nice. Can't scan anything. I'm trying- I don't want to make a shitty decision. I don't want to like walk into the water and have that end and then have the whole world get destroyed. I wonder if anything will happen. Wait, so Amelie is the beach? Because she's an extinction entity? I'm not sure I understand. Damn, double jump is awesome. Have I always been able to do that? So fast. Oh, he's slowing down. about them all the time. The truth is, those weren't your dreams. They were mine. For as long as I can remember, I've dreamt of the beach. Not just while sleeping, in my waking hours too. In my dreams, I watched the world end so many times. Countless past extinctions that decimated life on this planet. Again, and again, and again. At first, I didn't understand what I was seeing or why. And that wasn't the worst of it. There were other, more terrible dreams. Dreams of death and destruction. Of a massive extinction to come. Like this one. And I would always be the one to end it all. To bring about the last stranding. As I have today. Okay. I'm just gonna keep going then. <clears throat> <laughs> We've seen Hideo Kojima's name three times now in the credits. Oh, hurt ankle. <laughs> Epic roll, dude! Oh, here we go again. I am right back where I started. Seriously? Okay, I'm just gonna keep running around. Because I don't want to go in the water. 
I feel like that's the bad choice. The gun still has a role to play. But how long am I gonna have to sit here and watch credits? First operation. I was only twenty. I opened my eyes and found myself on the beach. But the moment I came round, I was back in the hospital bed. I was split across two worlds. Bridget, my ha, in that one. Amelie, my ka, in this. Okay. Somehow, the two of us managed to coexist. Soon, our ages began to diverge. Only Bridget's body got older, while the beach kept Amelie's the same. So I came up with a story. I told people that Amelie was my daughter. A daughter with a debilitating condition and an absent father. Look. Amelie. Oh god, what? Um, is French for so. Okay. A soul that's a lie. There was no Amelie. Only me and the beach. Okay. I thought it was a curse in the beginning. But later, I started thinking. Maybe I can use this. I tried to find out more about the beach. Because understanding the beach had to be the key to interpreting my visions of the future. Okay, really? I'm a lie? Soul lie? Oof. That makes more sense though now who- why Bridget and her look exactly alike. At least they got an answer to that, so they are the same person. I'm just still trying to figure out why- Why she's an extinction entity. Is it just something that happens? And like it's inevitable and the extinction entity has to bring these things to fruition because she seemed like she didn't know what oh she didn't know what she was she didn't know what the extinction event was she wanted it to happen but then she didn't want it to happen so is it just a course of nature that she also has no control over but it's funneling through her I don't know. Also, it was kind of cooler when the beach was just an alternate dimension. I mean, it still is, but... Having her control all of them? Okay. What happens if I just sit? I can't. I can't do that here now. So would I lose out on all of this if I just went straight into the water, or does none of that actually matter right now? I have so many questions. So, did she cause the first Death Stranding? I need some time to digest all of this. Are we getting more story? I realized the beach was connected to the world of the dead, which meant that somewhere out beyond it were the memories of time itself, including those of every organism that had ever lived. 4.6 billion years of biological history, a history that might even stretch back to the creation of the universe. The chiral network and everything that followed was born from my pursuit of that knowledge. By passing data through the beach, we were unbound by the restrictions of time. 
Simulations that would have taken years or more were simple and effortless. Everything that the Earth had lost and forgotten could be reconstructed and reclaimed. But shortly after we began our research, America saw its first void out. I thought I was running out of time, that my nightmares were becoming a reality. So I raced to complete the chiral network as quickly as possible. The past held all the answers. If only I could find a way to piece them together. A network that bridged our world and the beach. That might do it, I believed. So I started researching bridge babies, children bound to the world of the dead. What causes an extinction entity to come into being? What was the reason for the previous five mass extinctions? The answers to those questions would tell me how to stop the sixth. I founded Bridges, more determined than ever to build a chiral network that would cover all of America. But the longer I fought my war against the inevitable, the weaker I became. My ha had cancer. The beach's punishment, maybe, for not playing along like a good little EE. -E. <laughs> and then, just like that, my ha was gone. I couldn't finish what I'd started. So, I asked you to do it for me. And you did. You helped us complete the network. Helped us to reclaim everything the universe experienced from its inception to this moment. Every mystery was ours to solve. Like this one. Once, there was an explosion. A big bang that gave birth to time and space. Thing is, it was more like a big fluke. All that matter and antimatter should have cancelled itself out, leaving nothing. But somehow, somehow a tiny speck of matter survived. Just enough. Enough to make this world and everything in it. A world that shouldn't be a world out of balance. Order inevitably gives way to chaos. Everything that lives must inevitably die. It's like the universe is trying to return us to the nothing we came from. Maybe the Big Five were its best attempts to finish us off. But somehow, life always managed to survive just enough. Enough to thumb its nose at the will of the cosmos. You know? I'm starting to think that extinction might be the key to overcoming total annihilation. It forces life to fight to survive, to endure, to exist. That's why the Big Five ultimately rekindled life instead of extinguishing it. From the ashes of the dead rise the living. Stronger and wiser. Inheritors of the legacy of existence itself. They defy the universe, and refuse to surrender. They say, we're just getting started. Extinction is an opportunity. Okay, so she just is. She was just born into existence. And even she wanted to try and end it, and that's why she made the chiral network. To bridge a connection to see if sh that was a way that she could end up stopping it. But it seems like creating that network is what ended up causing it to happen in the first place. Or like, got it really going again. So, she's existed long before... The first void out, I imagine, is where the Death Stranding started. Because there's no way of knowing that it's a thing that's happening until a void out happens, and then more void outs happen, and then suddenly the world's an apocalypse. So she existed before all that, and it was a long time before the first void out happened. Interesting. Yeah, and I kept wondering in all the trailers when, uh, stuff happened, like a void out happened or something, it would show figures standing. Like, the Horsemen of the Apocalypse. I'm assuming those are the previous extinction entities... ...manifested. But... 
Some of them are like ammonites. Are you saying that an extinction entity was just brought into existence? So extinction entities exist just to keep the world going. That if they did- if extinction didn't happen then the world would just crumble to nothing and not endure and adapt and survive and go on. Is that what they're trying to say? I'm still a little confused. Oh, it's happening again. Here we go again! I pulled the trigger twice that day. I knew at once I'd made a mistake. I found your beach and looked everywhere for you. Sam. There you are. Free from death once and for all. It's okay. I know the way. But in doing so, I upset the fundamental balance between life and death. I just wanted to save you. I am an extinction entity. It's my fate to lead our species to extinction. But that moment, you became part of that fate. You became a repatriate, and dooms started spreading my nightmares to others throughout the world. It was me that got you and everyone with dooms into this. Not long after, the Death Stranding occurred. The dead clung to our world, and BTs used my beach to cross over and devour them, triggering more void outs. Okay. A catalyst that would set the world on a path to extinction. It was my duty to serve as a sacrifice, to wait and watch it unfold from this beach. That, or hasten the last stranding and end this slow death. Given these, my only options, I chose to end it quickly. But to trigger the last stranding, I needed you, a part of me. Here too. I would be able to witness extinction consummated with you by my side. But now that you're here, there's another choice. You can cut me off. An EE doesn't have that option for itself. But in my nightmares, I saw another future. One that you chose. One where extinction is hope against total annihilation. So Sam was found as a baby by her. She said she pulled the trigger twice that day. Oh. Okay. She pulled the trigger twice that day, which made it sound like she killed my parents. But I don't know who they are. It showed her putting a cross on my belly. Which is why he has that scar on his stomach. And then she- doing that brought me back to life or at least let me survive again? But why Sam? 
You said you found him and you just wanted to save him and everything, but... I don't get why. I'm still dissecting a lot of it. <laughs> um, maybe something else will happen at the end of this. I don't know. Sam's still able to drum all he wants, though. Drum to the song, Sam! There you go. <laughs> um, uh, see, now I'm blocking the credits. Now I ruined it. So, she's an extinction entity brought into existence for the sole purpose of guiding humanity into its death. Into its extinction. Other creatures in the past have done that as well. Creatures have been born to lead... ...their world into extinction. But the thing about this is that you're not leading just humans into extinction, you're leading everything into extinction. And then because she was born... The beach was created. The beach was created because she is the beach. She is all of this. She is the Death Stranding. She is the beach. She is the extinction entity. It's all the same. Creating her beach then built a bridge. But she found- she found Sam as a baby for whatever reason. Uh, maybe that was explained and I, I glossed over it. But she had the baby it seemed like he was dead, and then she brought him back to life and sent him back, which created a repatriate and created dooms, which connected him to her, and then that started spreading to other people. So other people with dooms were seeing crazy shit based on her dreams. And then doing that opened up the beach, or other beaches, for everybody, and the people who died were able to come back. Anybody who had died before were able to come back to the world of the living, and of course, dead antimatter particles interacting with real human, real life particles collide, annihilate each other because a dead person and an alive person can't exist in the same place. And that creates a void out which explodes everything around it, creating more dead people to try and come back, creating more void out. So it seems like it's an escalation thing. And then creating the chiral network was a way of her to try and stop it, but it connected all of the beaches together. Connected every single person's beach together, and hers on top of it. Basically, this is very loud. Basically like a node structure where hers is the top node, and then all of these branches come out and attach to all these beaches which were all different points and then when you connect the chiral network I'd have to draw it out this is my understanding of what the fuck was happening so you have her fucking name is so stupid by the way I don't like that at all soul is a lie um, I don't know how to spell it so you have her at the top. That's her beach. That's the the main point. Then you have all these others. Imagine that. Okay, let's just do this. You have all these other points then coming from her beach down. These are everybody else's beach. Just imagine this seven billion times. And then you have our world down here that was connecting back to this. So the chiral network was connecting back to the beaches with everything that I was doing. And all of these strands and bridges were connecting our world back to the world of the dead, which was connecting it back to Amelie, who's the extinction entity. But connecting all of the chiral network so many times ended up making this one. All the beaches ended up connecting together, and then she had control over all of it. So I think that that means then that she could just send the world of the dead and the world of the living colliding, which creates the last stranding, which ends it all. 
I think, I'm not sure, this is a very crude picture from what I'm trying to say, but this is in my mind what it looked like. I could be completely wrong. Because it's very hard to understand, and I don't know if it's hard to understand because it's very complex, or it's hard to understand because it's... Because it's... Uh, communicated poorly. Can I... I- I still don't know what my job is here. Am I supposed to shoot myself? A gun won't help you here. But it still has a role to play. Ah, uh, what? <laughs> Reconnect with the living. Listen, Sam. I was the one that brought you and Cliff together again. There was something I wanted you to know. You were never abandoned. And you're not alone. See my dad? Don't you see, Sam? You have to live. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa! See them? The five. That's what I was talking about. Those are the five extinction entities. I think. Yeah, because I was trying to figure out why Cliff also had the same scar on his stomach. He has the same scar as Sam has in his stomach, and I was going to make the joke earlier. Or not the joke, but I was just going to say that maybe Cliff's his dad. Oh. Yes? I'm trying to get back, but everything's very slow. I mean, he might not be his dad at all. Oh! Mama? That's so cool. Can you guys get me out? I see him. This way. Oh He's over there. Sam. D. Hartman? Over here, Sam. Dead man. That's so creepy. So it's coming, Sam. Are you ready for a job? Ready. Sam. I see you. Okay. Lou, take me to Sam. I hope I'm not making any mistakes here. She's in white now. Don't give up. You're still connected. Other five characters, though, as well: Hartman, Deadman, Die Hardman, uh, Mama Lochna, and Hartman or Fragile. I get one of those I missed, but I think there's five characters there as well. Hi! Did you use BB to find me? Oh. I found 
Come aboard it! It's all great. Ooh! Do I get an stopped the last stranding? It's awesome. <laughs> Die Hardman, so okay. Two hundred seventeen. Is that a good grade, mommy? I was waiting for some twist that like Sam was Mass Mickelson's character, or Sam was the first bridge baby, or Sam is BB. Something like that. Oh, it would make sense then that Cliff died trying to protect BB, trying to protect Lou. But he came back because they said that Amelie brought him back to do all of this. That's why he has the scar on his stomach as well. So maybe it's only repatriates who have it. Ah, that would make so much more sense. Because I kept thinking of repatriates as going to the beach and coming back, but no, repatriates go to the seam and come back. The seam then would be here, between this area. It's technically kind of on this line. So you go from this world, you die, you go to the beach. The beach then has the walking point into the afterlife, past Amelie, past all of this up here. And you walk into the water, you die, you move on to whatever existence is next in this universe. But the seam then is in here. The wavy, watery area, which is cool because everything's kind of upside down. You go to the beach and then you die and you go to the seam, but the seam is like just above the beach. Instead of being down below it or whatever. Um, or I guess the seam would be up here because this that was above Amelie's beach. Um, wait, how did Dead Man... Oh, because he's a dead man! That makes a lot of sense. Dead man could come to the seam and grab me and come back, and so could BB because they're both dead. Those that are dead and come back... Because he's 70% dead people. But Hartman and those guys are different because they're not fully dead. For too long have we lived as strangers to one another. Divided by walls built to keep us safe. But now, with the completion of the Cairo network, we may at last move forward as a people united. Today, we come together to celebrate the birth of a new nation. A new nation for a new world. The United Cities of America. I once took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And though that proud republic may be no more, we remain. And so, as your president, I hereby swear to support and defend you, the people. Let there be no more walls between us, nor masks to hide who we are. Oh no, he's hot! Let there be a new America. An America where we can face one another. Where we can speak our minds and open our hearts. Now, the old ways die hard. But I believe, my fellow Americans, that we have the strength and the courage to rise above our past and embrace our future. The Death Stranding is a part of that past. An enduring shadow. A constant reminder of what could have been. That we stand here today is testament, not to the greatness of any one individual, but to our capacity to come together. To the bonds between us. To our collective greatness. All things must come to an end. Ourselves included. But as long as we savor each moment, find joy in the promise of tomorrow, embrace hope, and reject despair, we will endure. President, 
Bridget Strand and her daughter, Samantha America Strand, sacrificed everything in their pursuit of hope that we, the people, might be whole again. That they are not here today to see the fruits of their labor fills us all with a profound sadness. But we find comfort in the knowledge that their memories will live on in the Cairo network and in our hearts. We will always remain connected. There is another hero in this story, one whose achievements seem destined to go unrecognized. America still needs that hero. <laughs> that person without whom we would not be here. Now, the name is unimportant, but you know who I mean. And for that unsung hero, I have a message. It was you who brought us together. You who made us whole again. And while you and I will eventually pass on, we will be... Yap, yap, yap. Am I right, Going Sam? Going somewhere, Sam? Tired of being the unsung hero? No. I'm done is all. She's gone. Come on, wait. There's something I need to tell you. Huh. This doesn't bother you anymore? <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> now... Wouldn't you like to know how we brought you back from the beach? We were going to use the doll, but didn't have one handy, which is when I remembered something else. Ah! You know what I think it is. Yes. What could be more connected to Amelie's beach than President Strand's umbilical cord? Hmm. Hartman thought that's why she left it with me in the first place. Unfortunately... It didn't work. Yeah, she'd already cut her beach loose. It was just gone. We didn't know if that meant she dragged you into the great beyond or sent you to some other beach. We were really racking our brains. Hartman and Mama split up and started searching every beach you might feasibly have washed up on. We looked for a month with absolutely nothing to show for it. A month on the outside. How long on the inside? Trust me when I tell you, you don't want to know. But don't worry. We found no signs of accelerated aging. In the end, this is what led us to you. Just when we were about to give up, Die Hardman reminded us about the revolver. So we tried to follow it, and it led us to a far corner of your own beach. And bingo, there you were. Mama made visual contact first. She was able to see you from her vantage point on the other side. She informed Lochna via their connection, and Hartman confirmed your location during his subsequent NDE. The plan was for Fragile to, in essence, slingshot Lou and me to your position so we could rescue you. But it's not so easy to send multiple individuals to another person's beach for an extended period of time. And that's where the umbilical cord came in. We wove these from President Strand's DNA. They serve as a single knot that binds us all. The President must have known all of this would happen. Ironic, isn't it? The gun that set this whole mess in motion ends up being the key to saving you. Hmm. Amelie. She said it had another purpose. Not a weapon, but a lifeline. A stick that became a rope. <laughs> I suppose that's one way of putting it. Oh, Sam. You have no idea how long I've been waiting to give you a hug. <laughs> Got something else to tell you. Top secret. It's about Cliff. Bibi's mother's name was Lisa Bridges. Cliff's common-law wife. Lisa Bridges. Uh, uh, now, Cliff was killed by a man identified in the records only as John. Former U.S. Special Forces. 
Quite good at it by all accounts. Later appointed as an aide to the president, who used him for most of her wet work. The records go on to state that he vanished after Cliff's death. A warrant was put out, but he was later found dead. And his dead. mask covers it up. Turns out some people die harder than others, though. Dear John donned a mask and reappeared with a new identity. But you can't fool the chiral network. We restored the old records, and Mama hid them deep in the archives. You're the only one besides us with access privileges. Take a look if you're so inclined. But don't say I didn't warn you. The president's got some dirty, dirty laundry. Mm -hmm. I don't trust him. But I'll work with him if that's what it takes. We'll talk later. Sam. I don't expect you to forgive me. But would you hear me out? I killed Captain Clifford Unger. I would tell you I did it for America. For love of country. But I didn't. I did it for her. Because I loved her with all my heart. She was everything to me. Everything. Now, I'm not trying to make excuses. I just want you to know that not a day's gone by when I haven't thought about it. Time didn't help. Or the mask. Please, let me finish. He, the captain, saved my life. You know why they call me Die Hartman. Because he wouldn't let me die. He brought my sorry ass back home, every time. And I loved him. As much as I loved her. <laughs> and... When he stared me down, that ghost, I knew he was here to kill me, to make it right. And why shouldn't he? Why didn't he? He couldn't save his, his kid. His baby. And that's what brought him back. I guess when he... He saw I was trying to do my part for America. He remembered who he was. And he forgave me. God! But I don't deserve it, God damn it! There is no atoning for what I've done! Dead God! Yo! <laughs>
But maybe... Maybe this is the next best thing. Maybe he brought me back from the beach for a reason. One last time. He wanted me to do this. To keep on being Die Hardman. No. He didn't. Nobody wants a president who acts like they're immortal. And if you're not scared of death, how can you value life? And life is pretty fucking fragile right now. And yeah, the old ways die hard. But that's what's gonna have to happen if we're gonna come together and build a better America. That gun won't help you here. That's her words, not mine. Thank you, Sam. <sighs> okay. That motion capture in his face was unbelievable. Hey, Sam. Been waiting for you. Lou? <sighs> Dead? Poor thing was never truly alive. Not in this no. world, at least. The decommissioning order finally came through. Can't risk necrosis. The body can't stay here. I thought you might want to take care of it. You could try taking Lou out of the pod just to see what happens. That would be in direct contravention of an executive order. And there are laws about that kind of thing, now that we're a nation. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. But if the alternative is defying the president, I can't do that either. Not me. All right. I'll go to the incinerator. Oh, God. Before you leave, I'd like to check something quickly. I just took your cufflinks offline. In that state, there'd be nothing to stop you from removing them. If you did, the UCA wouldn't know where you were or how to find you. You'd be invisible. When you use the incinerator, you'll be reconnected to the network automatically. I trust you'll remember what I said. Right, absolutely. I was wondering if she was going to show up. How's the weather? Don't think you'll be needing an umbrella. I decided to follow my father's dream after all. 
Don't worry. I won't get mixed up with any terrorists this time. UCA's got my back. We're the first private delivery company to get the official approval. Sounds like you're moving up in the world. Congratulations. Thanks. Wait. There's something I have to tell you. I didn't shoot Higgs. Couldn't pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. So I let him choose. Death or eternal solitude on the beach. Fair enough. You never did like breaking things. That's right. I find and fix what's broken. And reconnect. I'm fragile. But not, not that, that fragile. fragile. <laughs> you wanna come work for me? Could use a man like you. The world's still broken. Same as before. What isn't? But we're still here. We're still chugging along. Not everyone. Not me. Come on. You put America back together, didn't you? Doesn't mean there's a place for me. I've got no ties to anyone or anything. I might as well be dead. I felt like that when we first met in the cave. I still do. Don't act like you're the same person. You've learned how to touch, to feel. You've connected with people. With us. Everything I touch, I lose. Sam! God, it just keeps going. Do I? Okay. I actually have to bring Lou to the incinerator. Lay BB to rest. Oh, so could I. Could I technically just do. other missions if I wanted to? Oh, this is sad. I don't want to lay my little BB to rest. We've been through so much together! Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, I can't actually equip my thing. So does that mean that Cliff and that Lisa lady were my parents? Does that mean that Sam was that BB in the big- in those flashbacks? I, I'm confused on that part because he said that. No. Oh. I could just talk to Lou. She said I used the trigger twice that day. Assuming killing Lisa and Cliff. And then she found Sam dead and picked him up and saved him. And then he said that the mom was Lisa Bridges, and that he- Cliff called the lady on the table Lisa as well. So maybe they are connected like that. God, this is gorgeous. It's so weird to be completely free. <laughs> and not be beholden to anything in the game. To just freely run through the environment. But that opens up a can of worms then of this is this not the BB then or are me and this BB the same thing? Because that was that is what that would mean then. Either I'm wrong, and then they're not my parents, and this BB has nothing got to do with me, or I'm right, but that would also mean that this BB is me, <laughs> and maybe that's why we have a special connection. I have no idea. Ah, uh, Igor's ladder.
I forget which is the best way to get up to this area. Let's go this way. Man. It's still a little confusing, but a lot more of it made sense by the end. Die Hartman's character, I'm still like... I don't really know what's going on with you, man. Some of this stuff was kind of confusing as the way they explained it. And a lot of the characters are very one note. Like, even though Sam has gone through some stuff, he's probably had the most progress in it, but a lot of the characters kind of just seem stuck in their own uh, character traits, and they don't really deviate far beyond that, so it's kind of hard to get really invested in who they are. God, this looks so fucking good. This song is also amazing. I was- I've, I haven't been reacting to it, but I've- I've listened to this song a bunch before the game came out. Oh, I don't have my power gloves! I like it though. <laughs> I wonder if- When I played this game- I wonder if you can still keep going after this. I wonder if I can actually access these archives that they talked about. God, it's been so long. It's so cool that the game ends the way it started. With you coming here to incinerate some something you love. Someone you love. That's awesome. Because it just feels so long since we've been here. So that sense of journey really kicks in. I like that. Oh, but BB! Alright. I guess we're here. You still with me, Lil? Poor thing was never truly alive. Not in this world, at least. Well, thanks for everything. Sam, right? Brought you an astronaut. Mankind can go anywhere, even outer space. You'll be out of there in no time. And the second all this is over, I'm going to take you wherever you want to go. Agreed on. You said you'd do everything in your power to save BB. We are. But we cannot release your son just yet. Believe me when I tell you it's for the best. Is this a woman in a mask who's done nothing but lie to me? I have a duty to protect our country. Lies are an unfortunate necessity. 
So she used the mask to hide her identity so she could continue doing the BB experiments. Because they were supposed to be shut down and decommissioned after Manhattan. The president gave me the highest level access privileges. I've used them to manipulate the security system. We have five minutes before it resets, sir. Five minutes to talk. Off the record. Take BB and get out of this place. There's nothing I can do for your wife. I'm sorry. You were my commanding officer, but I swore an oath to the president to protect her and the country at all costs. Now, if she orders me to do something, I have to do it. I have to. But I served under you first. And your family doesn't deserve this. Any of this. Why are you helping me? If they catch you. Because you saved my life, sir. Again and again. When the brass sent us into the jaws of hell, it was you that brought us home. Back then, I thought I was invincible. I thought I was some kind of action hero. But I'm not the hero. You are, sir. You're the reason I'm still alive. And it's past time I paid that debt. They're moving your son to a new facility tomorrow. You'll never see him again. He'll serve as the foundation of a new communications network. A sacrifice for a nation that no longer exists. I wrote down everything you need to know. It was the only way to keep it off the system. Burn it when you're done. The rest is up to you, sir. This belongs to you, sir. Now, I can't terminate your wife's life support from inside her room. The system won't allow it. So, this is the only other option. Alarm is set to go off if she flatlines. I've rigged the system to spoof her vitals. But you won't have long. Five minutes, Tops. Don't hesitate, sir. This is the only chance you'll get.
Don't worry. I'll take care of him. I promise you. Promise you. These are all the things we saw, yeah, from his perspective. So is that me? I'm still not sure. Maybe there's more to it. That was cool though, being able to see it from the different perspective now. Ty Hardman tried to help him! Oh, BB. I'm sorry, little one! I just took your cufflinks offline. In that state, there'd be nothing to stop you from removing them. If you did, the UCA yeah, just take them off and you go. Or how to find you. You'd be invisible. When you use the incinerator, you'll be reconnected to the network automatically. What if that's why Sam can't touch people? You could try taking Lou out of the pod just- Because he was in a pod happens. when he was born. That would be in direct contravention of an executive order. And being let out of the pod gave him an allergic reaction to other people, because he was never touched before. No, try and take him out! Sam, what are you doing? The one is awesome on that one. That sucks. Yes. A purpose that cannot fulfill outside the pot. There is a 70% risk of catastrophic failure simply in removing it. Fuck. Hi, Mom. I'm sorry that Dad shot you. Weird. Do I go that way or this way? Oh, that way. Oh, this is exciting. I like this. It's daddy. Okay, can I not go that way? The fuck? 
Or maybe I can go past him, not just not into him. Yeah. So he tried to escape with BB, who I still think is Sam. Who's that? Then these guys came from... Maybe. Ah, no, let me down! There's somebody down there, I wanna see! Just bouncing off everything. This is so weird. I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't even know who I am right now. Hello? This is so confusing. God damn it! There's nowhere to go! Okay, maybe go back to daddy? What the fuck? What am I doing? That's why I was gonna come back! I was wondering if that's what I had to do. Oh yeah, we saw this as well. Freeze! Hey, put it down! Drop it! Put it down! Back off! Back off! Get up! Don't do it! I'll handle. So this too. He's trapped. 
Security will take it from here. They work for bridges. <sighs> ah, ho, ho, what? Uh. Am I actually here, or just a vision? I'm sorry, Lisa. I screwed it up. I've ruined everything. This room is off limits. No one goes in. But he's in there, sir. I saw him. You saw him. Now check the other way. Go! Yes, sir. Oh, he tried so hard. Open it up, Ethan. Saw this too. See the sunset, the day is ending. Let that yawn out. There's no pretending. I will hold you and protect. Look at 
you. Don't make the same mistake. Be yourself. Be free. Oh my god. Let it go. Please. Shoot him. I gave you an order. Shoot him. He told me your name was Sam Porter. What the fuck? <clears throat> You're Sam Bridges. bridge to the future that line makes sense now without you I was just like any other cliff dead end no way forward nothing but an obstacle Looking on at the world people like you were trying to build. Dividing people was the only thing I was ever good at. So good. BB2. And that's where she found him on the beach.
He had no willy. It was covered up. I checked. So is the seam before the beach or after the beach? There you are. So she's gonna cut my belly open. Oh, cause he had a gunshot wound. And in the beginning, Sam saw himself pick up the baby and then the baby disappeared because he was having a vision of her, from her. Oh, Cliff. You want to go home? Let's go home. So we're BB? <laughs> the fuck? Oh, now I can't kill BTs with that thing. Oh. <laughs> 
go. Let go. Come on. Let go. Bridge babies gotta stick together. So we're not that BB. We're we are a BB. Sam himself is a bridge baby or former bridge baby. Standing in timefall? <laughs> what the fuck? Jesus Christ, that just kept going and going and going. I thought it was never gonna end. I felt like I just watched a movie. Holy fuck. Oh my god. What the hell happened? <laughs> Jesus, that was weird. So a lot of the stuff that was going on in the game, I, I was talking about as it was happening, like on the beach and what Amelie is and her role and all that. I'm very confused as to what happened here at the ending. Also, what does that symbolize at the end now that we're out? Is it is it over or is it just oh dawning of a new day? There there was a lens flare of like a rainbow and I don't know if it was just because it was a lens flare but it had blue in it and I think that they said that the the chiral rainbows don't have blue in them. So maybe that meant something. I don't know, I need a moment to like sit and collect my thoughts so I can form good theories. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait for the- I'll sit and wait for the credits to end and think and then we'll see if there's something else. Do we get anything? Oh, we do. Oh, it's a little girl. That's really sweet. Oh God! Overall porter grade. Oh, the best ever. The greatest of all time. No <laughs> total number of structures built. Sixty nine. <laughs> nice. Pieces of lost cargo picked up 139, pieces of lost cargo delivered 88, orders completed 110. It felt like 117 million. Connections made 33 times BB Soothe, BB connection level. I mean, I could have gotten better, I know. Overall rating, Jacksepticeye. <laughs>
Uh, damn. Total likes received, 66,000. I received 30k from regular NPCs and 35,000 from other players. Thanks, gamers! That's you. That's everybody at home. Okay, I got a bunch of songs because the game ended. Memories of Cliff, change color scheme. Yeah, I wonder what- can I just- is there a new game plus or can I just play the game open world still or is it just ending? Do I have to start a new game? I would like to find out. I'm gonna sit here forever. <laughs> Episode 15, Tomorrow is in Your Hands. That's the tagline for the game. Two weeks earlier, what? So where and what am I now? Whoa. Well, look who's awake. Morning, Morning, Sam. You'll be happy to hear your vitals have stabilized and that you're well on your way to recovery. Ah, not that it's your fault, but what I wouldn't give to trade places. We're all stuck in the president's office, working like dogs to get everything ready in time for the inauguration. But at least one of us is still free as a bird. You should head out. Make the I most see. of it. Could even do some orders if you wanted. Might do you good to get back in the game. You may recall it was raining buckets back when you left for Amelie's Beach. We took a real beating at the time, but we've done our best to service the structures and vehicles in the area. So you know, any cargo that was stored in your private locker at a damaged facility should have been transferred to your private locker here at this Clever. distro center. Anyway, busy or not, we'll still be on the end of the line if you need us. And if you want some alone time, we should be able to manage for now. Just make sure you're back in time for the big day, all right? See you then. Hey, Sam. You sure you don't have any unfinished business? Okay, weird last line. So that's that's kind of interesting. So it goes two weeks ago, so the whole stuff with Amelie is done. But, hey! 672 likes. You should put those in at the end and give me a better grade. Um, the stuff with Amelie is done, but the stuff with the president and the cutscene and everything at the end is not. Oh, there's my big whale. So when you defeat stuff, it goes on the table. And then you go off and you do your stuff, and when you come back again, then it ends up on this table. Yeah, I know, Sam. Uh, is Amelie here? Because she should be. She should have her all her whole own thing. Crazy lady. Um. So I guess you can just head out and do whatever you want. Just finish more orders if you want. Just keep going. That's good though. I like when open world games do that. And this actually made it logical, almost. Getting scanned. Scanning bridges. Like I have nothing on me right now. ID. No orders for Sam though. You can deliver. You can deliver drugs until you're blue in the face, though, Sam. Isn't that fun? You love delivering drugs. Have a pleasant journey. What's on my hip? There's something on my right hip. Well, not fully on my hip, but on my right side. What is that? Hmm. You can see it underneath my elbow. That wasn't always there. Or was it? And I'm a lunatic. I could very much well be a lunatic. Could be an extra pouch for something. Alright, well, that does it for Death Stranding, I guess. Um, so I've come to the conclusion that... Sam is a bridge baby. He's not THE bridge baby. He's not BB-28. BB-28 is just some random other BB. But he has a super strong connection to BB because him being one in the first place has given him a super strong connection to those... Uh, entities in this world. Um, but Cliff's his dad, and 
Bri- or Lisa Bridges is his mom, and that's why they're called Bridge Babies, because they're the- the babies of the bridges, basically. I think he was the first in these new experiments. After Manhattan, and they were testing out the BB stuff, and all that went to shit, and the void outs happened, then they started experimenting with Bridget and Die Hardman and, uh, Cliff and Lisa, and their baby was to become a bridge baby. Um, and maybe that's why they're called, because it's a- a baby of the bridges, Cliff and Lisa. Oh, that's Lisa Bridges and Cliff Unger instead of just Cliff Bridges. I, whatever. Uh, names are names. You don't have to take each other's names. But he's also a bridge to different worlds, basically. And Sam himself is the bridge to the future, and he's the one bridging everyone together. So his name has a thousand different of the same meaning. I, I just don't know why he's called Sam. The entire time Cliff was calling him BB, does that mean Bridget just started calling him Sam randomly? Because she found him on the B- His name was BB the entire time, he was in the pod. And then he got shot, and then... Amelie found him on the beach, and called him Sam immediately. So who's calling him Sam? Is that just the name you gave him immediately? Maybe Sam has another meaning. It could have a very strong religious meaning as well that I'm not getting. Maybe that part crossed over me. You'll have to forgive me if some parts flew over my head. There's a lot of dialogue in this game. There's a lot of exposition, there's a lot of dialogue, there's a lot of characters saying a lot of stuff, but saying nothing at the same time. Let's talk about the game in general. The game in general, I really liked. Overall, I really liked the game. Was it as good as people expected to be? No. I, I don't think it ever could have been. Because people's expectations are just way too high, and Kojima's a master at mystery. And then delivering all this mystery and the super cool cinematography and then the game ending up being exactly what it is, it was never going to live up to the hype. Nobody could have made the game that everyone thought that this was going to be because that game just doesn't exist. Because people had just such crazy interpretations of what this was going to be. The, the gameplay loop of it, I thought I would hate. As soon as I learned that it was a walking simulator, I was very, very cynical. I was even talking to Troy about it, uh, be, like ages ago. He- he didn't tell me anything about it, really, because he can't. Um, and as much as I would have loved to figure out what the game was, ages and ages ago, he- the way he was talking about it, and the way he was kind of explaining what the game was gonna be, again, he didn't say much, but just little, like, tidbits here and there. Um, and I- I was worried that the game- he basically said what was in the trailers is what the game is, and that was it. So I was getting worried that the game was just walking. The game, turns out, is just walking. There's a little bit of combat here and there, but the game, by and large, 80% of the game was just walking from A to B, delivering packages. Now, on paper, that sounds like fucking torture. That sounds horrible. That sounds like something I do not want to do. That sounds like fetch quests the game. And technically, that's exactly what it is, but for some reason, I still really liked it. So, there's something in the gameplay loop that I- maybe it's just because those types of things are addicting. Maybe it's just because the scenery kept changing. I'm a sucker for scenery. The scenery being absolutely gorgeous to look at. Some of the best scenery I've ever seen in a video game. And some parts of this game are some of the most photoreal I've ever seen a video game look. At some sections, it was the best looking video game I'd ever seen. It's a little inconsistent though. Like the dilapidated buildings on the way to the Nintendo Wii building looked like shit. They... They looked so boxy and normal. And the lighting and everything just suits the environment uh, uh, outside of that, like the nature more. So when you bring it into actual recognizable buildings, the fact that nothing is really recognizable in this is very good. It really sells it a lot more. As soon as the snow started happening, it still looks really good as a video game, but it stops looking photo real. Because, I don't know, maybe your brain is just better at acclimatizing to that, or maybe it's just harder to do that, I don't know. But some scenes, like walking up to that weather station with that big giant satellite on it was the fucking prettiest thing in this whole game. And I just- I'm just a sucker for that. I'm a sucker for scenery. Every time we go out and we're just walking around, when I was on tour, I used to just love looking at places and how things looked and just looking at vistas and all that kind of stuff. I'm a sucker for that. So, for me, the world of this game was drop-dead gorgeous. The sound design is- is top-tier quality. You'll be hard-pressed to find better sound design in video games. This is like upper echelon type of stuff, and very few games delve into that level of sound. Some games have good sound, 
but it's all manufactured sounds. This sounds like they really went out and just captured millions of sounds to make it seem like it was real. Every buckle, every fastening, every zip, every footstep, every everything had a tiny, minute little sound. And it's something that you- that goes over your head because you just don't think about it because it just- it sounds real. But as someone like me who absolutely adores sound design and was studying it for a while, this is really fucking hard shit to do. And they nailed it. Some of the weirder creature designs and everything are so good. That fucking cutscene where they at the very beginning of the game with the corpse disposal unit with the guy wrapped up and then his face turns gold and starts shaking. That first cutscene that was a trailer they released is one of the best cutscenes I've ever seen in a video game. The way the cinematography was, that handheld camera, the way it's all just one shot, which is something that uh, video games really allow you to do. God of War is another really great example, the entire game is one shot. But you don't have to hide it in edits because it's a video game. But that cutscene is just such a good amalgamation of great acting, phenomenal cinematography, and world-class sound design. That moment when that giant BT is there and you hear that like woo kind of sound as the guy's being lifted up and he's stabbing himself and then the fucking twinkly lullaby music kicks in it doesn't get any better than that that's top tier stuff that's movie quality stuff in a video game and this game really does feel like a movie if you cut out a lot of the walking around and everything which still services the plot and the story and the gameplay and all that kind of stuff but Jesus Christ, there's so much movie quality stuff in this game. So as a technical achievement and a technical product, it's outstanding. I cannot sing its praises enough for the visuals, the the motion capture is some of the best I've ever seen, the skin, the little nuances of characters. Some characters looked better than others. I think Mass Mickelson's character and uh, Die Hardman's character, Tommy Earl Jenkins, they... There was something about their character models that just was way above everybody else. Um, because Norman Reedus' character had like little stubble and everything, but Mass Mickelson's character had the dots of follicles and the tiniest little bits of hair. Like, he grows a beard super fast and he hasn't shaved in a day. That kind of stubble. And that type of detail was nuts. It was so cool. Now, in regards to the story, I think... The story's concept, and I think its premise, is a lot better than its execution. I think it stumbled in a couple of places, I think it got overly bogged down in its own exposition at times. That it was just throwing phrases and sentences and world and plot and all this stuff at you in such sizable chunks that it was really hard to digest. The pacing of the game was all over the place, it could have been done a lot better as well. Um, there was some sections where it was like, the first two hours of the game is like 30 minutes of gameplay. And then between hour like 5 and 15 is all gameplay and there's very little cutscenes in it. So, it's a little lopsided now and then. And then when the dialogue and the pre exposition and all that stuff shows up, it's just a lot of terms that you have to come to deal with. And it was only by near the end of the game that I started, and only because I delved into all of the documents and actually wrote down like my own examination notes that I actually started to understand what the hell people were talking about. Because it's a lot of stuff labeled badly, but saying a simplistic thing. Like, the beach technically being limbo, but calling them a beach, I know it fits into the lore and the plot and the story and everything, and everything is very consistent with itself, but it felt like these weird terms to call something, when really it was a simplistic thing, to understand. So I think calling it something different, like calling it a beach instead of limbo, or maybe technically it's not limbo, but you get what I'm trying to say. Calling it a beach instead of limbo, every time you're hearing beach, then you're just imagining an actual beach and it comes, it takes you ages to try and figure out what the beach actually is, and then they talk about transferring data through it, and it just gets so bogged down and shit that I'm like, okay, it took me, it takes me a minute to just try and like figure out what they're saying, and then I'm like, oh, this is this and that's that, oh yeah, that makes sense now. And some would argue that yes, it's convoluted and that's the genius of Kojima, but I would say that it's overly convoluted for the sake of sounding smarter than it is. And that's not to take away from what it actually is, the concepts and all of that is amazing. 
the vision he had for this game, I'll get to that in a second, but it just feels like he likes the sound of certain things and then he just throws those words onto things. And that ends up making it sound way more convoluted than it actually needs to be. I think some of the stuff... I'm all for ambiguity, I'm all for vagueness and mystery and revealing plot when the moment is necessary. I absolutely eat that shit up. That is my forte. That is exactly what I love in storytelling. That is my type of storytelling. But I think trying to make it sound more complex than it is by labeling things, all this different weird shit, does does not service the plot in any way and calling people weird names like dead man and die hard man and hartman they all had an explanation and it was all logical but it's all <laughs> it's all just nothing it's all this weird bananas stuff that some people love because it's kojima and they love that kind of weirdness more power to you i'm glad that you like that stuff i personally think that the story is so has so much potential and so much of it was so serious a lot of the time that little things like that kind of pulled me out. I'm all for jokey comedic moments, but just when the time was right and in this it felt like the timing was kind of off every now and then. I was like super into it. And then like a good example is all the weird shit in the private room with Norman. All that stuff is delightful. Go for it. It's all weird, it's all wacky, it all kind of I guess is like perpendicular to the game and, and kind of clashes with some of the themes because it's so goofy and like the otter hat and all that stuff but those have their moments and those work but then like serious scenes and then a crypto bio shows up and you try and grab it and then dead man's like haha finders keepers num 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 and then he burps in your face all that stuff kind of felt a little childish and a little out of place I think it has a place it's just in certain scenes they fit in weirdly um what else can we talk about? I've talked about the story and what actually everything means and hopefully a lot of that actually makes sense. A lot of it I still just don't know. Um, but I think I got a good grasp of it and I think I explained a lot of stuff pretty well as it was going on and then by the end of the game, stuff started to unfold and it all started to make more sense as we were doing it. So I still don't know why Cliff has the scar. Maybe Amelie brought him back. Um, just to sum up, Amelie, Bridget, exact same person. One is in this world and one is in the other world. One is on the beach, one is here. Bridget is the physical manifestation of her. That's why she ages. Um, but they're the same entity. Basically like Lochna and Mama. They're, they're the same thing now. Because Mama is on the beach forever, but she's merged with Lochna um, as the same character. So the same concept. The only difference with Amelie is that she's an extinction entity, so she's extremely powerful. She has all of this supernatural ability to be able to pass on to other people and share it with them. Basically, she has the shiny. <laughs> um, so she was able to... She was an extinction entity just brought into existence because humanity and the world needs an extinction event to keep in check and keep things rolling and keep it all balanced, whatever. So she was just brought into existence and she was living along and then she didn't know what was happening and she was Bridget and she was... Amelie, and then by her 20s, that's when shit started to kick in. By her 20s, that's when people started to realize what she is, or maybe she started to realize what she is. But until then, she was just an extin extinction entity waiting for the time for stuff to kick off. Then the Manhattan thing happened. They were delivering a baby, emergency C-section. I don't know if the baby and those people and that stuff actually has a lot of really big significance, who they actually are. Um, but I, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Then they were delivering that baby. Okay, this is where stuff actually gets a little weird. So, okay, this happened a year before Sam's stuff. The year before that bridge baby was put the cross on by Amelie on the beach. Before that bridge baby was shot. Before Sam was shot as a bridge baby and brought to the beach, Amelie fixed him up and sent him back because she had a strong connection to him. Whatever, again, that part's not important. But the important part is sending him back opened that bridge. Before, it was just our world, beach, afterlife. All disconnected. But her doing that, her being in our world and there, was a connection already, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense then. She was a, a bridge between both worlds. Somewhat of a small connection. And then bringing Sam and sending him back opened up that connection more. And then suddenly... 
there's a character that's in our world that shouldn't be in our world, that the dead want back. So because the dead want him back, they're flooding into our world and trying to get him back and just suddenly the gates open and they realize that and they're able to get through. Before that though, in the Manhattan one, I guess the bridge is already kind of open because of Amelie and Bridget. So they came through after the baby was... The mother was brain dead and then the baby was delivered C-section and then I guess that opens up the bridge a little more. Something came through, a BT, uh, interacted with particles in our world, Boom! Void out. Everyone dead. Manhattan exploded. Fast forward a year, they're doing the BB experiments, she has the Die Hardman mask on because the Die Hardman mask blocks out your identity, apparently. I think that's what he said it did. Um, or at least Deadman said about his. Oh no, he, he took it off and he said it hides more than just my face. So it hides your identity and your existence because he had no records. So she had that on so Bridget, the President of America, could continue the BB experiments Probably because she knew what was going to happen. She knew that BBs needed to exist to bridge gaps, open up chiral networks, um, all that kind of stuff to either further the extinction event or prevent it. But at that point, I don't think she even knows. She just is and she's, she's working on instinct. Then bringing him back opens that up further. Then all of a sudden that bridge, that gateway is open bigger than it ever had been before and suddenly void outs start happening everywhere, aka Death Stranding. So that's when the Death Stranding started happening. That Manhattan thing was the first void out that happened, but the Death Stranding itself was the, exti the, was the mass one that killed a bunch of people. So a bunch of void outs happened at once, particles interacting with each other, annihilating each other, boom, void out. Um, so that, that's that. And then things just start progressing, they start using bridge babies to sacrifice to open up chiral relays and then the Cupid interacts with that to further the software to open up the chiral network. The chiral network then uses the beaches to send information, basically opening up that bridge bigger than it ever had been and Amelie being an extinction event, that relay being open, I talked about my, my picture here of it all being one beach controlled by her is basically like a magnifying glass and a prism to create the last stranding. There's a lot more nuance in the, than that, there's a lot more to talk about in regards to that, but I think I have a pretty good understanding of what the story is by now. Um, but I'll, I'll gladly listen to more theories in the comments, I'm gonna go off and watch a bunch of ton of videos on what it actually all means to see if my theories align with everything else. This is just my interpretation of what I've accrued over it, but I've done a lot of like reading in this game and everything, so I think I get it. Um, but I'd gladly be wrong and discuss it and debate it because I love this shit. Um, getting back to like characters and stuff and the actual game itself, the gameplay works when it's delivering stuff. I liked it when it was delivering stuff. I liked it when I could go to different places and deliver things and climbing over mountains and everything. It's tedious. But it works. It's what the game is designed to do, first and foremost, so that part works. When the combat kicks in, I hate the combat with a fiery fucking passion. Because it just wasn't fun. I think when you start doing the shooting mechanics and everything, that's when the third person shooter kicks in and... Whatever about delivering stuff being fun, that's subjective because the idea of the game is struggle and strain to get to where you need to be. And when you finally get there and you take that shower and everything, it really makes you feel relieved. But the combat, I feel like, is the most video gamey aspect of it, and it just didn't feel good. Yeah, that, that's a better way of putting it. Not that it didn't feel fun, it didn't feel good. It felt like I was constantly fighting against the mechanics of the game, that when I was shooting, then I also had to deal with the cargo, and I also had to deal with the balance. The cargo and the balance are the key fundamentals of the game, but then when you start putting shooting into it, and all these other characters are barely affected by it, and I have to do all this combat, while also doing all that other stuff, it fell apart. It was super annoying, very frustrating, I got very angry at the game at times. Because it's laggy. This game suffers what a lot of modern games do. Uncharted 4 was the same, and I complained about it in that series too. It's just too many animations. It's very realistic, it's very good looking. But when it comes to fundamentally playing the game, it's laggy, it's unresponsive, it's annoying. For regular deliveries, it's fine. It's perfect. It does what it needs to do because you have your time, you have your pace, you can go at whatever pace you want. But when combat kicks in, when BTs kick in, everything completely falls apart. Because 
you're suddenly having to do these fast reactionary things with a game that's not built around fast reactionary movements. And you saw it in some instances. It's really hard to showcase all those times when I'm like falling all over the place and characters are moving further than they should be. It's all because I'm not doing anything. Sometimes the characters just fall over. Sometimes they're walking in one direction. The momentum of all the characters on their back carries them forward. The Troy fight was a good example. The Higgs one on the beach because I kept trying to hide behind rocks but he kept walking a little further than he should be. One little tiny movement was like a couple of steps. And that shit drives me insane. I hate that stuff. Um, and then trying to get away from mules and trying to hit them and sometimes the animation was longer. The Troy fight's a good example as well. Sometimes it's a punch. Sometimes it's a wind-up punch where he goes like this and backhands him. And I have literally no control over any of that and that shit gets very frustrating when you're trying to do- when I know what I need to do, I'm trying to do it and then I'm fighting the game's controls to do it. So that stuff I didn't like. Delivering, exploration, all that stuff, mwah, it's exactly what it should be and I really enjoyed that. But the combat and the boss fights and that stuff, not so much. Well, the boss fights were fine, they were just too easy. And the only times I really died was because of that stuff again, where I got bogged down in the tar and the inky blackness and I was trying to get away and suddenly everything's just super sluggish and slow and it just falls apart. Um, but whatever, it didn't ruin the entire game for me, I still liked it. That's what I need to reiterate as well, I still really liked the game. The story, the concepts, the premise, the world, the sound design, fucking amazing. And um, it's just little things here and there that built up to big things and kind of pissed me off. And in a game this long and this, like, tedious to do, it just kind of shines a light on them a bit more. Um, the characters in the game, I didn't really care for. I, I just didn't really have a connection to any of them. I like Sam, I like BB, um, I like Mass Mickelson's character because he had depth. Mass Mickelson's character has the most depth in the game, even beyond Norman Reedus's character. Everybody else is like, I don't care. Like, they were saying things and you were supposed to be attached to them and everything. I just, I wasn't feeling invested in them and then it kind of makes some of the ideas gloss over because I'm just, sometimes I kind of zone out when they're talking because they're just not saying anything. Um, and the, the whole premise of him going west to do all this stuff, it just didn't feel like the key motivation was there. He was very stubborn, he was very a staunch defender of him, like, no, I'm not doing this, I'm not touching anybody, I'm not doing anything, fuck everybody, and I was like, okay, what are they gonna do to convince him to do this? And it's like, no, Amelie's out west and you need to go save her. It just didn't really feel like that that would be the spark to get that character to go do that, especially to go all the way across America, 90% on foot, and almost die constantly. Does not feel like that character would have done that. And then when he got to the end and it's like, you need to come back, it just felt like all these things were happening for the sake of happening. And the, the pins to like, really nail that weren't there. Um, again, the things that were happening were fine, it's just the way of getting to them felt all over the place. So, sometimes my enjoyment of the game was like, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, uh. Like it was very up and down all the time. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm trying not to be overly harsh on the game, but I feel like you're here watching me play this game for like 30 hours at this point. It's the longest, like, story-driven Let's Play I've done on the channel. God of War was the longest at that point, and that was 20 hours, and this is about 30. Um, but I feel like if you're here and you're watching it and everything, you're here to hear my thoughts and my opinions. Otherwise, you can just go watch somebody without commentary played if you really don't want to hear anybody's opinions. Or watch somebody who absolutely loves the game if you don't want to hear any sort of grievances about it. Um, I still really liked it. I think it could have been a lot better. But I still think what Kojima accomplished was really good. Like, to have that sort of vision, to have that sort of lore and that world building, it really does feel like a world that's built and that there's a lot of history to it. So to have all of that dialogue and all of that stuff figured out and all these characters and all that visual imagery. The visual imagery in the game was astounding. Having like, like a baby be a connection to the other world, like a, that baby is very identifiable. Everything just had such striking imagery to it that as soon as you see it, you think about this game. Like the strands kind of linking up and they kind of look like wispy, ghosty, inky things. Fucking insanely well done. 
the um, crying after a chiral allergy, whatever, like the convoluted terms and everything, very striking. Like seeing a character just cry after something like that kind of sticks in your head. The BTs themselves, the umbilical cords, everything just had this really fucking cool look to it. That I don't know how he managed to pull that off so consistently. The mechanics, the buildings, the structures, the bikes, the vehicles, the clothing, everything just felt like it belonged in that world. It was so insanely consistent with itself that again, I don't know how you think about that shit. It's an incredible artistic and creative mind to be able to think up of this and bring it to execution. Maybe not the perfect execution, but what this game is and how they accomplished it and what Kojima did from his brain onto video game is nothing short of wizardry. And for that, I ha he has my utmost respect. And as a creative person myself who wants to create worlds and wants to create characters and lore and all of this type of stuff that I'm, I'm already trying to do and figuring out how hard it is to do that, my hat is off to him for that kind of stuff. And to, this game was made in three years. And I have no idea how you do that either. Um, but overall, good game. And I'm glad I played it. I'm glad you guys watched it, I'm glad we're here, I'm glad we're at the end of it, and I'm glad we had an experience. Because this is one of those series that in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, I will still remember playing this game for YouTube. All of these long Let's Plays that have such a striking, like, it's just such a striking feel to them. And an atmosphere and a vibe, and we've been here every day together, living in this and just having fun. I'll never forget it. And I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching it. Um, Share the series with other people if they haven't watched it, if they're on the fence about Death Stranding. I'd like to think I did a decent job at the game and the series overall. Uh, leave a like on this video and the series in general if you enjoyed the whole thing. Um, if you found me through Death Stranding, why not consider subscribing because there will be plenty of other long Let's Plays coming in the future. And I really enjoy this type of content. It's like... This type of stuff is why I started off YouTube in the first place, and I'm glad we're still here in 2019, seven years later, still doing this kind of stuff. But I could talk all day about this game, maybe I'll do a live stream at some point talking about it more after I've learned more, but this video is too long as it is, and I could talk all day. So, thank you guys so much for watching, um, I had an amazing experience, and until the next series, I'll see you then. Let's let Sam give one more send-off. Sam, give it to us! It's not so bad. Anybody home? Who knows, Sam? We'll never know.